What's going on everyone? You're back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to look at the area of a circle. We have actually talked about circles before in our perimeter topic and we found out that they're actually quite annoying compared to other 2D shapes. The reason for this is that curved lines are just super annoying. They're way harder to count because we can't just see exactly what's correct. So before we jump into this topic, we just have to look at some of the terminology that we need to know in order to get these questions correct. So the first one is that the distance around the outside of the circle, which would be called the perimeter in some cases, but for a circle, this distance around the outside is called the circumference. And that's a super important term. The green line there, the straight line distance from one edge to the other going through the middle is called the diameter. And then half the diameter, which is from the middle out to a point on the circle's edge, is called the radius. And the radius is where most of our kind of work is gonna come from. So one thing that we have looked at before is that the formula for finding the circumference is based on this really important ratio called pi. So it is really important when we look at the circumference, we need to know the formula. And this is two pi r. And that pi is really important. It's a ratio between the length of the circumference or how far around the outside divided by the diameter or how far from one side to the other going straight through the middle. If you're not 100% sure on pi, I do have a video explaining that, which you can go have a watch. But knowing that formula, 2 pi r, is really important, but we're going to see that the area formula looks incredibly like this. So we need to know the di difference in order to get questions correct. So we're just going to have a look at a proof now. So if I have a circle, I could, instead of trying to find the, all the area at the exact same time, I could cut it up into little sections, kind of like slices in a pizza. And now instead of having to work out the area of the whole circle, if I could just work out the area of each section, I would be fine. But annoyingly, we still are dealing with a curved surface. So even if I lined up all these slices together, where I put the wedges half on the top and half on the bottom and jam them in together, Annoyingly, we still do have curved surfaces, so we're not going to get this one right. But what I could do is go back and make my cuts even smaller. So I could add in more cuts through the radius. And I could keep cutting and cutting and cutting until I have much smaller sections. What this would do to the end of each side is mean that there would be less curve every single time. And now when I put them back together over on this side, you can see that there's not actually much space in between each one and the top's looking quite straight. This now kind of looks like a parallelogram, one that's really, really obvious to find the area of. And then if I kept going and kept making even smaller cuts, infinitely small cuts, eventually the human eye wouldn't even be able to see what these cuts would look like. So instead of having all these radii cuts, it would just look like a fully colored in circle. And what that would mean, if I took every single cut that I made and then jammed them together, like I did in the last two, I would have a shape that looks incredibly like a rectangle. Because all of these cuts are so close together, it just looks like a solid line. So that's all good. We've taken a circle and seen how it kind of looks like a rectangle. Big deal. But what we can do is find out the dimensions of this rectangle that we've made, and that could actually tell us, hey, if we just times those two things together, that'll be the area. So because I've taken a cut at every single radius going to the point on the outside every single time, and especially when those cuts get really, really small, all we need to do is say, oh, I've made a cut at every single point around the perimeter. So that must be how many cuts I've made, which is two pi r. But because of how I've stacked these two things together. Remember I stacked half of them so the curve bit was at the top and half of them so the curve bit was at the bottom. The length down the bottom there, instead of being two pi r, is just pi r because I've used half of it. The other half is actually up the top. And then to find out the height, that's actually much easier because I've gone from the middle to the outside every single time that I've made one of these cuts. That height is just the radius. So if I asked you to find the area of this rectangle, easy as. It's just pi r multiplied by r, which is just pi r squared. And that is the formula for a circle, proven through a rectangle. There are heaps of other ways to prove this. There are great videos on YouTube, but this is just one way that might help you realize where this actually comes from. So this is actually kind of annoying. 
We've got two formulas, circumference and area, that have the exact same stuff in them, just in different orders. The circumference is 2 pi r, and the area is pi r squared. So one way that I want you to think about this, just to make sure you're not getting confused, is think about the units that you would measure both of these in. The circumference is just a distance around the outside. So we would measure it in centimeters or meters or kilometers, but that's it. So there would be no powers or indices in this answer. But we always measure area in centimeters squared, meters squared. And because of this, there's actually a really easy kind of trick to remembering it. So all I do is I think about the units having a squared sign in it, so that's there. And I need to know that the formula that I'm looking for, the area formula, has to give a squared answer, so it has to have a squared in it, which is this radius squared. So if you can remember that, you're not gonna mess up using which formula, even though they look so similar. So now if we just have a look at how to do these ones, we've just gotta find the area for the next couple of circles, and all we've gotta do is throw it into the formula. Again, making sure that we use the radius every time, not the diameter, is the major skill. We're gonna just round these to two decimal places every time because that's pretty much standard for most of your tests. So for this one, it's super easy. We know that the radius there is four, so we just have to do pi multiplied by four squared. That's our answer. We don't have to actually do anything. If you throw that into your calculator, you're gonna get the correct answer. So just before we type this into our calculator, we do wanna make sure we can guess the correct answer first, just to make sure we don't mess anything up in our calculator. So pi is about three, just a little bit more than that, and four squared is 16. So in your mind, if you do 16 multiplied by three and then add a little bit on the end, you know your answer's gonna be right if that's what pops up on the calculator. So 16 times three is 48. Add a little bit on because it's because pi is just a bit more than three. So I know my answer is gonna be 49, 50, 51. And if I don't get that, it means I've probably done something wrong in my calculator. When I type this in, I get the answer 50.5. 27 meters squared. So I know that I've done this right. That's right in line with my guess. Happy days. Just remember, please put your units in, otherwise you might lose a mark. So this next one here, we've got the diameter, not the radius. The only thing you've got to do is make sure you know how to find the radius really quickly. It's obviously just half of that number. So we've got to use five, not 10. Make sure you check that before you do these questions. So this is just pi multiplied by five squared. 5 squared is 25, multiplied by 3 is 75, so my answer is going to be just a little bit bigger than 75. If that's not my answer, I've done something wrong in my calculator. Once I throw this in, this gives me the answer of 78.54, again, centimetres squared, full marks. For this last one, you might be given the area and have to work backwards to find the radius. This is easy because pi can just move around, okay? Even though it doesn't look like a number, we can just divide it and multiply it like we would in a normal algebraic expression. So we know that pi multiplied by r squared is going to equal the area that's been given, or 412 centimetres. Now, to get r by itself, that's what I'm looking for, I've got to divide by pi first. So once I throw that in, I get r squared is equal to 131.14. Again, just round it to two decimal places, but before you do the last step, just keep that in your calculator because we don't want to round too early. Of course, I don't care what r squared is, I want to find what r is, so I just have to square root both sides and that'll be my final answer. And as I throw that in, I get r is equal to 11.45 centimeters. So for this one, it's not centimeters squared, okay? Just making sure we know that it is centimeters. In order to check that we got this right, always a good thing to do, if you just go pi multiplied by the answer you were given squared, throw that in your calculator exactly, that'll pop out with 412. Happy days, we know that we got that right because our substitution has checked our working. I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you later.